joints on the ledge Live in the hills, but I still get a spread Something for the live, but I still reinvest it Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing I just want the lesson, I just want protection I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression Mama never plans if he waits for perfection I think it's in the down hole yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in at September 16, 2021, and China might crash the stock market. And I got three stocks that I'm looking at coming into the rest of the week, but we have to talk about this because what you saw today, it went from testing that 50-day moving average. We were right there testing support, and then all of a sudden, by middle of the day, we ended up doing very well. However, this is creating a notable divergence considering everything going on, and we got more more updates out of China, specifically some of their data. So we've been talking about this all week, everything going on with the tapering, inflation, but now all of the issues going on with Evergrande, China, as well as our debt ceiling. So it's all kind of coming together here, but seeing this rally and seeing where we go from here, this may create a certain opportunity, especially if this storyline keeps playing out how it is. So we got a lot to talk about. I'm going to go over everything that happened in the market today what we're looking at tomorrow, the plays that we made today, and then the plays that we have for the rest of the week. So let us not delay. You guys know what you need to do. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes for open. It's the first link in the description and it's been in the comments. We better see you there in the morning. It's free 99. It costs you nothing to join youtube.com slash the stock market. You can post a play, see the plays, watch the watch us come to life. And yes, if Victoria's Secret and Haram mean anything to you and you weren't allowed to look at it or even go in there as a kid or anything, then yeah, we are the place to be and the most important thing you need to do. Post or watch below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to Chad, baby. So right off the bat today, the test of support just overall lacked the conviction. That's what a couple of analysts have been saying. We were at that key level, but even if you saw how last month played out, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. We came very close, but there was not enough conviction to kind of break it through. And if you look at any of them, and that's why a a lot of these bounces have happened. It's one partly the move and you're getting that middle of the month spy rollover, whatever you want to call it. We've seen most of the or the last four of the last drops have all happened at the option expiry. But if you notice, a lot of these moves have lacked the conviction. Now, this one was a little bit interesting because it seems like we have a lot more going on in the market than any of these times. And that's a point a lot of people are bringing up. But at least in the short term, the market survived the test and depending on where it goes, from here this might create that divergence with China that I'm talking about. So before I get a little into that, there was another big factor today, and it pretty much was Microsoft low-key saving the stock market. And as you can see, based on this first pretty picture, this is showing you the largest buyouts or stock buybacks that have ever been made in history. So as you see, Apple and Microsoft dominate this chart. I do not know how GE is up there. Come on, like, look, it's literally just Apple, Microsoft, Apple, Microsoft, not even Google. So what we got here today or after hours yesterday, you saw that in effect, but the market really liked it. Microsoft announced that buyback and really they were up at least 1%. Even when we were dropping a little bit in the morning, Microsoft was holding up. So a lot of strength did come after there. They are either the number one or number two market cap company in the world right now. So it did have a big effect. So a lot of eyes were on that. And it did kind of distract from some things. And what I'm saying was distracting was the really bad China data. The two most notable parts came from their industrial or, or excuse me, building production. And then the second one came from their retail sales. So you could see this chart now, but essentially their retail sales year over year has entered a point where it's really below where they were during COVID. But the scary part about this, the estimate was 7%. So all the analysts in the world were expecting a 7% increase, but it came in as 2.5. And a lot of people are pointing to Delta economic slowdown and the stuff that they did. And that is part of it. But then when you look at the building data and how they are not building, it's pointing to this whole short-term pain, long-term gain as they are starting to crack down in property and high price property and even development, that has been an area that has been targeted by Xi Jinping. So now add that to what else we saw today. There was also more curbs on the gaming. It hit some of our stocks, but overall now, 
China didn't do too good. Uh, the European Stock 600 and the FTSE 100, they all went down. And I think they're now starting to create a little bit more of a downtrend. But now you see we had factors like the buyback, the buy the dip at the technicals. A lot of people were waiting for it. Things didn't get too bad there. So now, depending on how we move from here, if the next coming weeks, as we enter a very crucial period in October, if we start to rally in a lot of the China data keeps getting worse, or now the debt ceiling gets worse, that may very well be our opportunity to strike, but we just need a trigger. So today was very, very fascinating, and another aspect of that was the debt ceiling. The worries did actually increase today subtly. One thing people are pointing out, if you look at what the market did, the bond move was just as confusing as it was yesterday. You saw the bonds do a lot yesterday off of the move as we were coming down and getting some of the other data, but then today, it really did drop and came back to this level and even though it's at the same point really on the daily it's kind of highlighting or at least giving some hope that bonds may start to respond normal because as debt ceiling risks start to increase that should lead to an increase in the bond yield so analysts talked about it today the bond market is literally not pricing any issue for the debt ceiling and historically that would make sense but now as more and more things and more news that we got today comes out it's looking like this situation may be a problem or at the very least, stagflation. So at the end of the day, the market was able to brush everything off. It's creating this divergence. Do I think we're out of the clear just yet? Not quite. I want to see what happens tomorrow. And depending on what we get that could cause a lot, and even for the rest of the week, you are going to be getting jobless claims and retail sales tomorrow. And then that consumer sentiment on Friday, that could be important. But the real key is going to be, do we get more updates out of China, either more crackdowns, more bad economic data, Data, or does Evergrande collapse? Ironically, today is the 13th anniversary of Lehman, and now they also got another downgrade on Evergrande. I believe that's the second time in the last week or two. So it is highlighting the escalation of that situation. But depending on how we play out, that's why tomorrow and the rest of the week coming into Powell next week is going to be so important because I'm pretty sure the market is going to start picking up on this stuff. Unless there is just a big rally and we completely disconnect and create that divergence if China's situation starts to keep going we will probably start to react to it but then it's only a matter of weeks here if we do see no solutions or more escalation rhetorically whereas we could start to see that debt ceiling issue come to life and start to move the markets but coming into the company news and events for today this is right related to the debt ceiling but McConnell uh, he warned that the Republicans are united in opposing to raising the debt ceiling and that Democrats have the ability and responsibility to make sure we do not shut down or default and that is going to be how they pretty much put together these bills and we got updates today on the tax bill and how they plan to get the money and how much they plan to spend but overall today and getting that and this is what had a lot of people confused that the bonds didn't really react too much when you look at some of the bond curves and that is because today was really a warning shot where the game of chicken is about to begin if you don't know anything about this I would look into the 2010 debt ceiling issue the first time we ever got downgraded usually the debt ceiling issue it's in everybody's best interest to resolve it but now when there is a lot of politics and tension in the air it can lead to some issues and we saw that happened about a decade ago but now it's going to be starting this match of one side saying we're not going to do this the other side's going to push it off but the point is now they realistically have about one month and two weeks to get it done otherwise at that point we will be at the edge and now somebody is going to decide okay do we concede or not or do we kind of let this spiral out of control so the damage expected would be very great which is why some people don't expect it to happen at all however it is something heating up and we are already quickly going through some timelines and estimates that people made. Some people thought we would have ran out of money by now. So looking towards October, that is the estimate that the Treasury has given of when they expect or the CBO expects for us to run out of money. So this was a really big piece of news. I want to see how this develops again towards the end of the week and then coming in next week with Powell. But watch out for that. Then the House panel has approved the tax hikes to raise about $2.1 trillion through these efforts. And this is for 
all the bills. However, two of the more contentious issues that would really create more bigger effects or even a bigger reaction from people is the salt deductions. They punted that one to Pelosi. They said they're going to figure that one out later, everything else they could agree on. And then the reporting standards for the bank accounts where they want to give the IRS the authority to pretty much monitor bank accounts in the sense that any transaction, $600 or more, has to be reported by banking institutions to the IRS. So these are two big issues that would create two very big responses. They were able to agree on everything else, but depending on how some of these go, we might see some market reaction. And coming into tomorrow, they did agree on a lot of taxes for corporations. So depending on how the market reacts, it may give you some insight into how worried or how glad Wall Street may be depending on what gets passed. But there was that. And then this one, I want to watch the stock tomorrow. I think this is actually huge, but Coinbase uh, has applied with the Futures Trading Commission and they are looking to start offering in crypto futures and this is something they haven't touched since their inception it's a big step forward it could even hint at some of the bitcoin etf or some of the stuff the sec is doing but overall very big news for this space so i want to see how this one plays out tomorrow then lucid they jumped up today on the reports that the epa uh, this is kind of weird because it's the environmental protection agency but they recognize lucid as the ev with the longest range ever for an electric vehicle so pretty positive investors liked it but like I'm saying here too, it is the EPA, but I will definitely keep an eye out for that. That is something. And then coming into Cisco now, we had an awesome play on this. A lot of us were very, very confused, but they had a little weird pop and drop. There was a reaction and catalyst from their investor day and their sales outlook got people excited. Some of the products they were looking to get into, but then their profit expectation is what disappointed. And pretty much they said they can't offer everything that their clients want because of shortages and they do expect to spend a little bit more. So it wiped out any of the gains. We went from 100% to down on that play very, very quick. That one was fun and surprising and weird. I want to cry. But watch that. And then back to some of the Bitcoin and El Salvador stuff. This one's a little interesting here. I didn't really hear much about this except for after hours. But El Salvador is actually having protests now for people who are against the adoption of Bitcoin. They're more so against the president and what he's been doing with power. They're calling him a dictator or tyranny or something like that. But part in part, they are talking about what they don't like with Bitcoin. And they said it's risky and that he's demolishing the country or something like that. But overall, there is tensions raising and they even burned one of those Bitcoin ATMs. So there was that. And then finally, more crypto news. There was a lot of other random news today, but given the move you saw in the market, it was actually quite dry. That's why I think the market had that opportunity to kind of bounce how it did but then this one was very interesting i'm even a little bit shocked by it but the nft marketplace is just disheartening uh open c they said that one of their employees was front running all of their promos so essentially if you ever go to open c's website they have these couple of nfts that they feature on the home page and usually it brings a lot of demand these are usually really active nfts but what they found out is that a big person in the company because they ended up a couple people on Twitter, they were tracking the wallet. You know, remember I showed you guys on the NFT video. If you guys want, here's my wallet. You know, you could track it. You could see what I got. Anything else, you could send me some. But they tracked it back to one of the heads of the company and he was literally buying nfts before they got mentioned here he knew which ones and he was flipping them for like 600 to a thousand percent or something so pretty wild pretty disheartening we will see if any updates come after that or how it even affects crypto but that was something to watch but overall it's clear that we have a lot more bigger issues on our hands and depending on how things start playing out our opportunity may be setting up so i hope you're ready but that is pretty much it so Oh, let us get into the plays. <laughs> So right off the bat, I got three different stocks that I'm looking at coming into tomorrow. I have plays on one of them, made another play today, and the other one, I think I have old ones, but we'll keep an eye on it. But the first one is going to be JD. I wanted to make a play on this today, but I already have enough on it, and that's a key to the whole strategy. That's why I was like, okay, I can wait. The premiums are moving, and that's what I like about them. If you've been watching any of these China stocks, there's been this back and forth as they get bad news, and they kind of get bought up, and 
and then they drop again and then Kathy Wood announces that she's going to get into it then it comes back down and it plays this game but it has been creating great opportunities on the options so I really like the JD the fact that the options are moving they're going really deep negative and then they're coming back really positive and then they're holding up or anytime there's China reaction or China escalation you're watching the IV go up even if it's not directly related so that's the exposure that I like to see on that and above all else we talked about this today there is a lot of meat on the bone when it comes to JD so if you come to Baba you know this is their 100 day chart you could see this is a very very big drop and it keeps going down but now come down to JD here it's pretty much flat and has not moved the same. So they have came up a lot. I even want to say this was a $12 stock. Yeah, maybe a little lower, or I guess $22 was the level, but you could see here, you know, it's been a lot lower prior to this, but even in the midst of everything with Baba, it has not gone down the same. And that is simply because the external factors, literally Kathy Woods buying in a lot of the first round of dip buyers, some of them got burned on Baba, but some of them kept hope given the fact JD held up a little bit. So I like it for the down side but only to get protection to this whole China situation so it's not as if I'm trying to attack the company as much as I'm really just going for the exposure to any downside so I did not make any plays and this is what I'm talking about now because these Novembers I was down on these about 50% if you guys remember and then we averaged down on these I think a couple days ago or earlier about a week ago or 10 days so it was interesting because this one was up like 70% at one point these even came back to life so you got to see them move and now they're holding premium but even then this is what I mean the options move some of them are going back to negative it is not really holding the move and now timing is going to be of the utmost importance if you guys even remember the Baba play that I made yesterday that one kind of highlights it here you could see it closed up 52% today but in the morning throughout most of the day until we saw that bounce these were up 200% I sold out eight of them yesterday I could have made a lot more but even then I think I had about three four hundred dollars on this trade before it came back down and then the ones that I rolled over to with more time those are still positive and they only moved up as far as like 10 to 20 percent and then came down so you could see how to play this game and like I'm saying with any of the China stocks they're good to trade but they're gonna make a move if that move doesn't last long they will bounce and go back up negative it's a mix of both timing as well as making sure that you have enough time and are and close enough to the money to be able to actually capture a good portion of that move so that being said I like the meat on the bone with JD I like the fact it has the exposure I like how it's moving I want to make another play on it but I'm gonna wait it out just like you saw with the Baba I already have enough in that play where if there is a move I got exposure but you guys saw how we went about Baba with some of that you know you'll miss out on a couple of them but then at one point you know you saw how I kind of wrote it out we took over 3,000 percent on the downside and then I waited out for about two weeks and then I grabbed that Baba literally on Friday and then boom we got the next drop right there I didn't have to be early on the next drop and I got to let a lot of the premium you know flush through and get a pretty decent price so that is going to be the first play the second play kind of a dud uh, I made this one today but we'll see how it plays towards the end of the week this one was a weekly I thought it was going to move and we got the news very early but YouTube made an announcement that they are releasing podcasts so I thought it would have like a YouTube effect kind of like Amazon when they announced that but there was very minimal reaction I think it's a decent idea to see how it plays out for the rest of the week but if you don't see anything kind of materialize for it it will truly be a dud so I put about 110 114 dollars I grabbed the weekly 230 puts we grabbed it in the moment 57 cents surprisingly they only closed down about 25 percent so not too bad but I'm going to be watching them tomorrow and then finally this one caught my attention I was talking about it today but Facebook they were a notable underperformance today so even if you looked at Apple and Amazon they were a little bit weak with the market. Microsoft was holding up because of the buybacks, but then Facebook at one point was down like two and a half percent, and it didn't really make sense why. There was some news about Instagram and kind of an investigation they had on it, but overall, I'm kind of thinking that the antitrust demon may be lingering and something's there, but I don't want to get too jumpy. However, how it performed today, it really stuck out to me, so I want to keep my eye on it. Just like we saw yesterday, Microsoft was doing very well. Pay attention to the leader, and then Facebook 
Facebook today as far as the, the FANG and the big mega caps, that was definitely the underperformer. So those were the main plays as far as everything else. We're going to watch uh, the China stocks and then bros. This was the IPO today. I want to go and get me some Dutch bros today. But the one thing I didn't like about it, it did not sell its full offering. So it had a good premium at open and it kept going up. But this one was very, very suspicious. But we'll watch how to see how that one plays. But keep your eye on them. And they did not meet criteria. So watch out for that. Watch out for Viacom. Premiums did not move as much today, but it was a big move. We need the second day continuation. But if it does start to wake up, that could show us a lot. But I do like the performance. Again, 4% is a nice move, but it kind of highlights the recent volatility. The fact those options did not move at all. So watch out for that. Spotify and then Baba, like we said, and then uh, down to HXL. This is the one that I botched the other day when there was that little rumor there. But if you notice, it's actually been creeping up about 2 to 3% every couple days since that announcement. So I had that big pop chilled out a little bit yesterday, but then today it's right back up there towards the higher point. So we got a little bit of decay on the option and I bought during the middle of the hype. That's why I'm down on it. But seeing how it's moving, I'm not really writing this one off just yet, but I will keep my eye on them. So that's a good one. And then Roblox, our favorite, they got a price target upgrade. They gave their mid-month updates like they do in the market. Didn't like that, even though there was a good report on online gaming and just gaming in general is up over 7% year over year, highlighting that the return to normal return to work didn't really kill the video gaming industry so that was very very positive but they got a price target upgrade by JP Morgan to 103 and they pretty much just lifted themselves with the market but I think watch out for them on a day where kind of Roblox has its own individual move the market was up today Roblox likes the down days that's why so watch out for that Cisco like we said all that baby mama drama I'm still in that play I was up 100% I did not make them free I definitely could have but then it dropped too quickly so gonna be watching that one riding it out but we may be out of luck there but that plays till October so I will be riding that one out so watch them watch DoorDash uh, this one just caught my eye that they are just killing it they're absolutely killing it and leading and especially when you look at where they are on the IPO level and even a potential IPO breakout this could be very good but now even comparing them to like Uber Uber sold off again today even despite the price target upgrade yesterday and even though the overall market did good here so watch out for DoorDash as an outperformer and then just watch the whole space in general, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, anything related to the gig working or food delivery, anything like that. So watch them. And then uh, that was pretty much it. There's a couple of other tickers, but that was just from earlier today. But then TLT, we already talked about it. Yes, we want to keep watching it here. I do believe something happened yesterday, but there is clearly a lot of confusion going on. The dollar did get to make some sort of move, but then it kind of it didn't really come back to normal. It seemed a lot bigger throughout the day, but what's going on? You have this China stuff you have the bond issue and then you have commodities and oil doing a lot and even then China relates to the oil situation they recently just sold oil out of their reserves for the first time ever and that usually is an indication of something they may not like the high price of oil so depending on how things are playing out even the debt ceiling that could even lead to the dollar weakening so we got to wait for it to see what happens but the real key is that something did snap and I talked about it today I just don't know what it is and, and nobody really does and you have so many things going on right now again overseas down to the debt ceiling but we need to keep our eye out for this and whichever one is able to get a clear-cut velocity and move that should be able to tell us but we are still a little bit premature but now we really got to stay focused so i hope you're ready but that is your watch list ladies and gentlemen make sure hydrate healthy ready to go make sure you post your watch list make sure we see you there in the morning i need the armor on i need the helmet shining i need you to remember you just gotta recognize the love baby but the co loves you i love you i'm gonna see you in the morning. Let's go.